everybody welcome everything's all kind of messed up i did some other videoing this week and now everything is all kind of out of whack um but i think we're good so hello it might be just a little loud how about that hey guys it's a new month and we're going to be doing new stuff today we are jumping into foils and flocking um because one week we are going to do some flocking which is really cool um yeah, foil. I know it's kind of a controversial question because people aren't sure if they want to buy like new foil stuff and whatever. Um, but we're going to talk about ways that you can use other things you already have. Like in most cases, you can use heat embossing to do basically the same things. It's just a different look, right? So we're going to talk about that a lot this month and we're going to explore lots of different ways to foil and I'm going to have fun with that fun with foil. Yay. Um, hey, so let's get started. So glad to see all of you out there. Um, don't forget to give me a nice thumbs up if you like today's video. I'm, oh, hey guys, totally so excited. I'm so glad you guys are loving the technique videos. Um, they're going viral. <laughs> Not like millions of views viral, but they're going viral for me. And I'm so stoked about that. So I'm Keep watching, keep watching them. I love them. YouTube loves them. People love them. Awesome. Hey, let's take a look at some announcements. Um, hey, the Card Maker Success Summit waitlist is now open. Go to NicoleWattCreates.com slash card summit, and that will take you to the Card Maker Success Summit homepage. That's not, um, I don't run the Card Maker Success Summit. It's run by um, Brandy Mahone. Um, I always say her name wrong. Sorry, Brandy. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's going to be at the end of July. We're going to be doing winter holiday themed cards. So the card that I'm doing is completely usable for any kind of winter holiday, whether that be um, Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or Christmas or just regular winter, New Year's, you know, all those good things. So um, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to be using gel plate, gel press, and uh, totally stoked about that. So... Um, Sign on to the wait list so that way you find out when everything opens up. Remember, that's a 100% free event. You can always get the bump up for the all access pass to get access to things afterwards. But um, otherwise, it's free and you can take advantage of all the great stuff, including the Facebook group, which is actually still active right now. Um, OK, so let's take a look at the next few months. I did a flip flop. So May, um, of course, we're doing hot foil this month. June, we were going to do wax mediums, but I'm flipping it around. We're going to go right into gel press in June. And then July, we're going to do wax mediums. So that way I can have some stuff prepped in June um, that goes along with my summit project in the at the end of July. I wanted to have some things out there. So we're going to flip it around. I know you guys don't care because um, we're going to get to all of it. So um, pull out the gel press. Woo -woo. Love the gel press. So we're going to happen with that um let's see we all know about the technique freebie if you don't that's how you get on my mailing list and you get a technique freebie while you're at it uh, and a um, really great pdf file that will help you start your own technique binder um crafty sales oh there's um national scrapbook day week oh national scrapbook day week <laughs> is going on at a lot of craft stores so be sure to check out the crafty sales page for new sales as they pop up I have some updating to do there, but um, they will be updated today. Um, let's see. Of course, tagging on Instagram. I love it when you guys tag me on Instagram because I get to see how you're inspired by everything on this channel. And um, I really love it. We're going to go over some of our final projects from the challenge from last month. So uh, you might get to see your card today. And of course, I always appreciate it when you guys use my affiliate links. You know why I'm always saying this? Um, because A, I do appreciate it. And B, because it's legally required by laws in the United States. I am an affiliate. And if you use the links down below to shop, I might get a small commission. Always at no additional cost to you. Always a great way to support crafters in the industry who are trying to just um, make a few extra bucks to support our craft. And um, in some cases, trying to make a living from it. So thank you. Every time you use my affiliate links, I appreciate it. Of course, you can always um, give me direct compensation by popping a tip in the tip jar. I do appreciate it. Thank you to Aaron and Kathy who sent a tip my way last week. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, hey, uh, new subs. Tons of new subs because, and I don't know why this isn't scrolling, but it's not, whatever. 
Um, tons of new scrubs this week because uh, subs this week. <sighs> I can't talk. Um, because my Tuesday videos have been going like crazy. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. I had 50 new subscribers yesterday. Yes. And of course, this isn't 50, but um, thank you to you guys for subscribing. I do appreciate it. Um, hey, so one other announcement. The Bloom Creative Community is open. If you've been wanting to join the Bloom Creative Community, now is your chance to do it. It will only be open until next Tuesday. So if you are interested in reading more about the creative community, go to join.bloomcrafters.com slash BCC to learn more about the community and to join. So um, it's only open this twice a year. I will not be opening this again until maybe later next year, maybe not until next year. Um, so definitely check it out, see if it's something for you. We're having a ton of fun. I've just um, remodeled everything in there and it's gonna be really, really awesome. You do not wanna miss out. On the Bloom Creative Community, we do what we do here, plus a whole lot more. So I am I would love for you to join. All right, guys, let's see. That is the end of our conversation here. Let's um, go over to some projects to share. Okay, so these are from the end of last month. So of course we were doing our stamp focus challenge with picket fences. Um, uh, awesome stamp set with the chucks the chuck taylors the kicks the great tennis shoes um and we did some really great coloring um for our last project and so aaron did an awesome job this one went out to her nephew i believe because he's graduating so very cool excellent work on your underpainting there i love it i can see it it looks so awesome makes these look real 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 Great job. And then she worked on a little bit of pointillism, which was another thing that we talked about last week. So if you missed it, go back and look at last week's live stream and check out the two um, techniques that we did, um, underpainting with gray and pointillism with alcohol markers. Excellent work on this. I love that stamp too. That's another picket fence stamp. All right, Rachel, she tackled these guys as well and she did an excellent job. She added in some bling on there and her sentiment looks really great. Excellent work. Thank you for sharing, Rachel. Um, Jess also worked on it and she did a great job. She did a close up of some of that pointillism. You can see how using that colorless blender creates a really cool texture. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much, Jess, for sharing. And check out Cece. She was working on some of her pointillism as well. I sent her some extra tips. Um, but it's looking good. I hope you kept working around with that um, CC because this looks really great. But I know that you could add another layer on there and it would look even better. All right, Karen was working on her kicks as well. You can see she's got some background stuff going on here. She did some underpainting. Looks really great. I love the color of the pink and the brightness of the yellow. Looks fabulous. And Rose, she went through the entire challenge with this particular stamp set it's a gorgeous um underwater stamp set i can't remember who it's from um all the stamps are from club scrap she says um they were really gorgeous and i really loved all of the underwater ocean themed projects that she did and of course she um did some underpainting here on the white um, which looks fabulous this looks gorgeous 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 and then you can see the pointillism in here and i think this is a really effective way to make it the water look a little bit more um fluid it looks like it's got some motion and it gives it some depth as well it looks fabulous so thank you to everyone for sharing totally appreciate all of the shares so don't forget to tag me at nicole Walker Eats. it's right up there you see it go for it all right, we have one last winner from the challenge and the winner is Lisa H. She is um, gonna get a three month Technique Library subscription. So congratulations to Lisa. I will be reaching out to you via email to talk about getting you the access to the Technique Library. All right, and that is our last giveaway from the challenge. Thank you to everyone who participated in the challenge. It blew me away, all of the amazing stuff you guys did, all of the uh, work you did, everything that you, you put into the... Um, uh, to learning all the techniques and sharing your progress and sharing your projects at the end. It was just fabulous. Uh, we're going to be doing another public challenge in September. So mark your calendars and I'll be I'm putting out some information on how you can get on that wait list soon. So stay tuned. All right, guys, you got to see what's going on down at my desk. Like, ah! 
ah, it's a mess. All right. Here's today's project. This is a brand new hot foil plate from Alta New. And I love this card. And people really wanted to know how I made it. And I knew that I was going to be doing it for this live stream. So um, we're going to dive into this. It's so fabulous. Um, let's take a look at my desktop, though. <laughs> It's like off full up. Um, I'm so excited. I'm getting like a little kitchen cart so that way I can put some of these tools on my kitchen cart and it can be like next to me or behind me or something. So I don't have to take up all my, my desktop space. Um, I wanted to talk about foil real quick. Um, there's a lot of questions about foil. I'm not gonna be able to answer all of them today. Today we are using hot foil. So um, this uh, hot foil, is like this Gemini foil press hot foil. You need to have the hot foil machine and it goes through your die cutting machine. So I have my Gemini Junior here. I have my Gemini foil press here. They work together. And then Gemini um, Crafters Companion has foils that you can purchase that go along with the whole system. Okay, so there's a difference between hot foil and toner foil. Toner foil is like something you would use with the toner card fronts like these here, or um, you can use this uh, deco foil transfer gel with that. And there are a couple other things I'm going to show you um, across the month, but the deco foil like from iCraft or ThermoWeb um, is what you use with the toner fronts and with the transfer gel duo. Um, and it also comes in the round containers as well. These are um, six by 12, so they're a little bigger. Um, so any of these kinds of things, like anything from ThermoWeb is toner foil or transfer gel foil, okay? You cannot use this flocking or foil with a hot foil plate and a hot foil system. They do not mix. Okay, so um, I gotta do a blog post on that so you guys know the difference and maybe like a little chart or something that would be helpful. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. We're gonna use these later in the month, just not today. So today we are using um, the Crafters Companion, um, their foil press foil. And this is designed for paper craft. They have some other ones that are designed for paper and fabric and other um, materials. This one is strictly for paper. So, but we're using gold. So I've got my gold foil here. All right, I've got my plate. I've got some other little tools here. I'm gonna show you how I use those. And I've got my hot foil press set up here. I've got my Gemini set up here so I don't have to go anywhere. And then I also have some gel press leftovers. So I think what people were really curious about was this. And I love it. It's beautiful. You can see like some words in there and stuff. So remember a couple of weeks ago when we were doing, um, I did a faux gel plate project and we did um, an eclipse card from it. It was probably about, it was about two months ago. And uh, I'll, when this, sets up i'll put up one of those little um bump outs so you can get over to that video really easily so remember when i did that and we did um we did these so they were kind of yellow and orange and then i pulled out the um phone book and i started doing prints on there as well right so i pulled out one of these prints um to create this and it turned out absolutely gorgeous. So that's where I got this from. We're not going to do the gel plate part of it today because that's just going to take way too long. And this month we're focusing on foil. So I'm going to just go through here. I pulled out a whole bunch because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. Like what was my vibe for today? Like I kind of like this one. Um, or I like this one too because you can see some of the words in there. It's got an interesting color palette to it. So I thought maybe I would do something a little different. This one would work, but this one also stands alone really well, so I don't know. Thought about greens. Um, there's this one too, which is super bright. So like I said, I went into my scraps bin and I pulled out things that I thought would be kind of interesting. So any of these would really work for this project, but I'm gonna use this one. All right, so I can do this project over and over and over and over again. All right, 
let's get to foiling. So we're going to foil first and then we'll do our sentiment. The sentiment is done on vellum and fussy cut and uh, it's actually quite easy. And then we just have a, a few little embellishments on there, right? So the card's not too difficult as far as like layout. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to have a lot. Um, but we've got some fun techniques going on here. Okay, so here is my foil plate. Now, um, the foil plates have like a nice wide-ish line on them that really helps to make sure that you get a nice press from the foil. All right, so we're going to do the foil plate on here. And then we're also going to do the foil plate on a piece of white cardstock that I have already cut down to size. So the first thing I need is a couple pieces of foil. Now, foil can be a little difficult to cut, and I've yet to pull the trigger on that Spellbinders um, foil cutting system. Um, because I have a ruler and I have one of these Tonic Studios rotary cutters. Um, this is actually a craft cutter from Tonic Studios, although you could use any kind of rotary cutter like for fabric. I would just not mix the two because you'll probably dull one or the other and it just won't work out so well. So I need to get a few pieces of foil. And for the first one, I'm going to... Um, cut a piece that's big enough to do like the whole piece here. And this is going to be the one that I use for my for my gel plate piece. So I have it um, rolled out and this is the back side, the silver side, because we're doing it in gold. And I'm just going to take my ruler and use it as a guide so I can run my rotary cutter across it. And I find that this works pretty well. Actually, it, it it works better cutting it on a piece of glass, believe it or not. Um, I don't know why it doesn't like to cut through onto the um, onto the mat underneath here because it's a self-healing mat. It should cut through this just fine, it, but it doesn't always like to. All right. So there we go. There's my first piece of foil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this foil... I'm going to put it on my piece of paper here. All right. Do, do, do. Just roll this up for a minute. So we want the foil to adhere itself to the piece of paper. So we put the foil pretty side up and then we put our plate on it. If you put it the other way with the foil ugly side up, um, it's going to actually stick to the foil plate, which is not what we want, right? We want it to stick to the paper. So this is how it's going to go. And because I want to try to fit as much of that on here as I can, that's what that's going to look like. All right, so I'm going to just take some of my post-it tape and pop it on here. This actually um, works just fine. All right, so I've got this all set up. Now, on my foil press, it's hot right now. Um, it's <laughs> it's warming my hands. I can't put my hands on it for too long because it is hot, uh, but it's not so hot like um, instant burn, right? So um, I've got it set on the second level because this is a pretty big plate. So what I'm going to do is just flip this over like so and put it onto my um, foil press. All right, so right now, let me just kind of move this into the view so you can see what I've got going on. So see, it's all sitting on here. And then I'm going to take this cover plate. It's like a fiberglass kind of Kevlar-y plate. And I'm going to set my timer. Do, do, do. For this one, I'm going to do 30 seconds because it's kind of big. All right, and then I'm just going to press start. Now, the, this is really just a timer situation here. It's already getting warm. I'm going to put my hands on here and stay nice and warm. See, now this is not hot um, because it's got all these layers on here. So it's really just kind of warming my hands, which is great because the basement's a little cold. All right, so we're just going to wait for this to count down. And once it's done, we pick up this whole thing, not the not the base, but this. you see this got this handle here. It's going to come out. There we go, that's going to be for me. All right, so I'm going to pull this out. You see how that comes off? And basically, it's um, a nice warm plate that's going to go through my Gemini Junior. 
So this is similar, if not exactly, to the way that the um, one from Spellbinders works. But of course, with Spellbinders, you're doing the hand cream through, right? So I'm going to go ahead and run this through my Gemini. My Gemini Junior, I should say. All right, so it just runs right through. And I'm going to flip it over. Now this is going to go right back under here and then it's going to reheat so that way it's ready to go for our next one because we need to do one more with this all right so let's see what we've got here the plate is um the plates cool down pretty quick so it's um you can move it at this point so i want to do like a big reveal here but i don't know oh there we go i'll just pull this through. so basically what has happened is this everywhere that there's little lines and everything has stuck to my paper. You can see that, can't you? You see that beautiful impression on there? So now when I pull my foil off, ta-da, it's gonna leave that beautiful flower impression. All right, and then this piece, I'm gonna be able to heat up and um, put on a piece of cardstock and I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so we need to do another one, but it's going to go on this smaller piece of cardstock. So this is going to be our background piece. <clears throat> All right, and so I just need, I'm going to cut this just a little larger than what I need. So this little guy works pretty well. Like I said, I think it works better to cut it on glass. But I didn't have a little glass mat to bring over, just my big one. And I didn't feel like doing that today. All right, so again, I've got my piece of foil. And this time I'm going to hinge attach it. So... There we go. And then I'm going to put my flower on top. And this is going to be kind of like setting the stage for where the flower is going to be located on this. Um, if you aren't sure, like do a larger piece and then you can selectively cut out what you want for later, right? But this is going to work really well. So we're going to do the same thing. So again, here's my press and here's my little sandwich and it goes on here and I put this on top and we press the button and it's going to count down and do its thing. All right so let me grab some colored cardstock. So 30 seconds, pull this off. And again, see, like I can hold it. It's warm, but it's not like gonna burn my hands off. I'm gonna run it right through. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is put my, put this back on. I'm gonna put this on there. This is a solid plate that helps me to get the reverse image. So it's uh, four and like four and a half by five and three quarters. It's a lot, slightly larger than a card front. So that way you can get like a really nice impression here. I'm going to bump this up to the third heat level. So that way um, it really gets the heat going around on it. Okay, so here we go. Another, re another reveal. So now we're done with this plate. We can put this away. Okay, so if you don't want to invest in hot foil, 
a lot of companies are coming out with stamps and dies so you don't have to necessarily and uh and um stencils so you don't have to worry necessarily about getting the hot foil plate if you don't want to invest in this right now or it's just not your bag you can always just get the stamp and do your heat embossing right so you could do heat embossing on this and get a very similar effect right you could do heat embossing on your white cardstock and get a very similar effect you're just not going to have um, this is like debossed because it pushes in um versus embossing that has that raised image all right so it's just a slightly different look uh, and that's okay so there you go love it love it love it okay so now this has been heating up i'm going to take my pieces of foil my leftover pieces and you see i just um put this right on a piece of red cardstock and i'm going to flip this over pop it on here and let this um, run down for there go. and then we're going to get the negative images and I like to do these right away so that way I so that way I don't have to worry about the foil getting messed up later um because you know like the foil you can scratch it off the back or whatever um, but if I do it right away then I've got pieces ready to go. I can throw them in my scrap spin and they look amazing. All right, so that counted down. So again, I'm just gonna pop this through my Gemini. Oh, you know what? Um, and then I'm gonna let that plate heat up again. So I pull off my thing here and it looks like nice and flat, but that piece of um, carrier plastic is still over the top of this. So you just kind of have to peel up the corner a little bit and then it's going to leave all the foil behind. There. And so now I have this scrap piece that I can use for another project at another time. That's a lot of foil and I'm not really big into like huge foil pieces like this. So I will cut this up and use this for smaller bits. All right, so there you go. You might see that at the end of the month, we're gonna be doing a scraps day for sure because this will create a lot of scraps if you do this kind of thing. So again, I'm gonna pop this on top so I can heat up that, um, that piece and get it, get all the good stuff so you don't feel like you're wasting any foil at all. Yeah, exactly, Sue. I would die cut this piece and do something, you know, you could do words with it. It doesn't even matter you, that you see the pattern. Um, it's just a nice piece of foil with some really cool red behind it. So I would totally use this in any, in any kind of application. All right, so it's gonna go through again. All right, and so now we are done with our foil press. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I just had to double check and make sure I was done. Yeah. All right, so then I can just put this in here and I'm going to move this out of the way. Oak it up. So again, um, you find an end here. I'm going to pull that off. And now I've got a really cool, another cool floral piece with pink behind it. Now you can see sometimes the edges don't always get caught. Um, it may end up looking a little bit more distressed, but this is a great look all by itself. So lots of cool things that you can do with this as well. All right. Uh, where can you get the big rectangle plate from? Um, the one that I have is from Waffle Flower, um, but Waffle Flower carries them and Pink Fresh carries them. And I believe Spellbinders has some, they have some in different shapes. So you could do like an oval or a... Um, uh, a square. I don't know if they have a full size rectangle one yet or not. All right. So there you go. So these guys we're going to set aside. Maybe you will see them again later this month, like I said. And then we've got these. All right. Let me reset. Phase two. So, 
the next thing we need to do is I'm going to fussy cut this. Now, I don't want any of the leaves. We're going to use the leaves from here. So you can see that this piece, what this is, is it's just the flowers and then the leaves I left behind on the white. Okay, so we're just going to do... And the nice thing about this is that the fussy cutting doesn't take long and it's not too hard. So I'm just going to go right up against the gold and let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Right, and I'm just going to um, cut the flowers out. I don't need the leaves. And this is newsprint. It's very, very thin. So I kind of have to be careful to make sure that I don't like cut right through a flower because that could be done pretty easily. Right, if things start to get a little crazy, of course, you can just cut your pieces off there. Sometimes that makes it easier to get into the ins and outs. And you just take your time. If you find that you have troubles cutting, fussy cutting, it could be um, because the cardstock you're trying to fussy cut is thick. So the nice thing about this is that it just kind of glides along with this thin paper. And um, I'm not getting any harsh edges because um, it's just so thin. Like your, your scissors aren't like cutting into it funky. Sometimes that happens. So again, like if I feel like, oh, it's catching up to me, I'm going to just cut out the extra. You can always do the in and out method too, where you just go to the center of each petal and just kind of pull them out like so. <clears throat> I tell you what guys um, allergies have been really bad in this area and my eyes are like burning right now and I'm still fussy cutting oh I gotta step away hang on a second Oh, see, look at this. My eyes got all red. Oh, that's an allergy attack. Woo! Um, the bright lights don't help either. <laughs> so CC says, I'm always so inspiring. And she always wants to start playing around with her stuff immediately. Well... So Cece lives in Sweden and it's nighttime there right now. And so she's always like, I'm hoping that the night goes fast so that I can go play with my stuff in the morning. <laughs> and I love it. I'm glad I can inspire you to um, to play with your, your stash. Because that's, I mean, really what it's all about. Like, we always joke about getting stuck buying things and not using it and... Um, that that's not a great feeling like we want to be able to use our stuff and be inspired to use it so i'm glad that i'm inspiring you even if it is time for you to go to bed <laughs> oh all right if you're just joining in i'm not crying it's uh it's allergies Allergies are the worst. Okay, so here I am kind of at a crossroads. So these two flowers overlap each other. So I have to, um, I'm just coming around and keeping them together. So this is just going to be one big piece. And as I'm cutting out, I'm, um, I'm cutting out the leaves. I don't want the leaves. I just want the flowers. Okay. 
All right, so again, the nice thing about um, fussy cutting on this is that the lines are a little thicker. If you choose to do this with heat embossing, I find that to be like the easiest way to fussy cut because you just cut right up against the embossing line and there is that little ridge there. So it kind of makes it easy to um, easy to cut. All right, so things got a little hairy right there. So I went ahead and um, just trimmed off that edge because I don't need that paper getting in my way. Um, also with the foil, especially with this particular flower, like the lines are not always necessarily the same thickness. So if you don't cut it perfectly, it doesn't matter. Oh, there, see my eyes are better now. It's so strange. It doesn't help like um, face oils and stuff like to accumulate towards your eyes. And that's always is a nice irritant. It's lovely. All right, so again, I've got my third flower, this flower right here. And I know you guys are like, I don't know if I can see the flowers. Well, we're going to um, fix that in a minute here. All right, so again, if you choose to do this and you're on like newsprint or really thin paper, just be careful. You don't want to snip something off accidentally. Oh, look, and then we're right back where we started. Okay, there is, um, let's see, there's a little spot right here. I'm going to poke a hole in it so I can get my scissors in there. and cut it out. So there's actually like a little space in between these flowers. You can um, you can skip this part, obviously. You, know, you can you can do whatever you want, right? It's your project. I'm just trying to inspire you. Um, but I want to cut this out so that way you can see like the three distinct flowers, right? So now you can see it. There you go. Three flowers and those are going to go right on top that and you see how that starts to work together oh you guys are so sweet um sue says i like your um in your lives is that you do something in front of you some um start the project then put it down and come in with one completely done oh <laughs> yeah sometimes i do just because of time constraints but um you know i thought oh i can fussy cut that in no time <laughs> mm. Um, I always run the risk of messing up though, right? But that's what crafting is all about, right? Hey, Cece, you said that piece of um, pointillism was in the trash. Don't put it in the trash. I'm going to show you um, in our in our um, Bloom Crafters Q&A afterwards, I'm going to show you um, how to fix that or how to keep going with it, I should say. Okay. All right. So pull out your gouache. We did this a couple of weeks ago too, right? Remember we did the um, white... Um, whitewashing over the shoes. But remember when we did that, it was with ink sprays and ink sprays are water-based and they get reactivated. This is with acrylic paint and the acrylic paint, once it's dry, is not going to reactivate. Um, just remember that if you're working on something thin like this, this is newsprint, um, that you just want to take your time with it. So I'm going to water this down just a little bit. And then I'm going to just take this so what I found is I, I liked the look of it, but I really wanted those flowers to stick out a little bit more, right? So I'm just taking my brush and I'm going, giving it like some flick strokes like you would with, a, with an alcohol marker, right? Just from the center. It might look like a lot at first, but it's gonna dry. And when it dries, it's gonna dry lighter. Right. And the cool thing is, is this is not sticking to the foil. So I don't have to worry about like going over the foil. You see, how I'm just kind of like going over it. I don't have to worry about the foil because it's not going to stick to the foil. Awesome. All right. And I'm just going to go around on all of our little petals and give these guys 
a little whitewash accent that's going to help them stand out. Now we might have to go around and do this a couple of times. I would rather have my whitewash be not enough and have to do it a few times to build up the color than to put down too much to begin with. It would be hard to recover from that. Right, so let's start with less and work our way to more. All right, so you can see it's starting to come to life a little bit, but you see now that it's dry, um, you need to come back and add another layer. And again, it's gonna look like maybe too much to begin with, but it'll lighten, it'll blend in just a little bit. All right, so hey guys, um, while I'm doing this, don't forget to like today's video, let YouTube know how much you love my content. And hey, click that share button and share it with someone who would be interested in what it is that we do here. Um, for some reason, my name just doesn't get out there, and I don't know why, but I'm like the best kept secret of the craft world, and I don't want to be that way anymore. I want people to be able to join us and take advantage of all the fun things that we're doing, and um, I love to teach, so I want to teach more. I want to teach more of you. So share, share, share. Let people know. When you get my emails, forward them on. Share them with friends. All right. So you see, I put a couple little layers in there, and that gives us some more dimension, right? Because now you can kind of see what's going on with that flower. You can see, oh, there's like little individual petals now. When you see it in person, it's a little easier to tell. But um, this really just kind of helps everything stand out. All right. Um, so once you get it put on the card, if you decide that you need more, you can always come back and do more. Okay, let me grab this. And I just want to pull up any that is on the foil Hold it gently there. All right. So there we go. Okie doke. Now. So I'm not going to back up too much, but here's our um, our background piece. And now this guy's going to go right on top of it. Just going to lay down right on top. Now, I'm not even going to worry about cutting these little bits off because that's actually not going to um, fall outside the card. You see how these little pieces here, they're just fine like that. All right. And even if it does fall outside the card, no big deal. When you put it into the envelope, it might roll a little bit or whatever. It's just not going to, um, it's not going to matter. Just that little bit there. I think it looks really cool that way, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of my glue and I'm not gonna glue the whole thing, all right? So put a little bit of glue on the centers of the flowers. It's almost easier to do it on this piece. So look, I'm not even really going out very far with it because what I want is I want those little petals to be able to pop up a little bit all right so now I can just smush this right into that glue all right and then we'll leave the white out just in case we need to add a little bit more in a little bit all right so because I want this to dry just a hair and then I might add one more little coat because you see how nice and bright this is this needs just like one more coat, but it needs to dry a little. All right, so there we go. That is um, done for the moment. Let's set that aside. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Phase three. <laughs> All right, phase three is stamping. Um, This is an older stamp set from Alta New. And let me, so if you look on the back, um 2017 so this is a stamp set from 2017 more than words it's a lovely stamp set it does not have accompanying dies 
they're really great we're gonna um, see this one again this month and I've got my first one so I've got it set up here this is a piece of vellum and we're gonna do this with some black embossing so I've got my versifying clear I've got my anti-static powder it's just it's really important with vellum that you use anti-static powder because um vellum is just staticky it's just super staticky okay i already have my stamp done up here now i am using versafine claire in nocturne and the reason i'm doing that is because um, i'm going to be able to see that everything is stamped nice and clear and it's also going to help cover any spots that might not get any embossing powder on them just in case all right and it's stamped so nice and crisp gosh i love a versifying claire all right so did you see that i just popped it over i didn't do any kind of shimmying and i'm just very carefully i'm rubbing this up and down to make sure that i get good contact you don't want to smush it too hard um, but see that i get a really nice impression and I know that I've hit every bit of it and I can pop it into my black super fine embossing powder there we go all right and we'll heat this up All right, so I have to say, guys, I'm kind of disappointed in my current um, heat tool because it seems like it has a cold spot in it that is um, making it difficult to heat emboss sometimes. So I might be on the market for a new embossing gun, unfortunately. All right, so you see what you guys didn't see what happened there. So the pad underneath kind of bubbled up a little bit, but as soon as it cools, it does flatten out again. All right, so again, I'm still kind of waiting for this to dry just a hair. We're gonna fussy cut this as well, all right? So if you need to, you can take a pencil and you can put a line around it if you need to um, help guide yourself into keeping things in shape. Sometimes it makes it go faster if you've got a line because then you don't have to think so hard about it. All right, so even with the vellum, you can put a little pencil outline if you want, or you can just go for it if you're if you're good at fussy cutting. If you don't want to fussy cut at all, you don't have to fussy cut this. You could just do a strip and leave it leave it just like this and put it across, and that would work. You could just put it right across. That would work too. All right, so if you like the look of that, you could definitely just do that. Right. I wanted to minimize the amount of what was covered on the flowers, so I'm going for the fussy cut option. This is a great way to practice. It's been a while since I fussy cut anything. I really wish the stamp set came with dies. Maybe I'll have to reach out to Alta New and ask them, because I know they've been doing that with some of their other sets coming out with add-ons and things like that. I could always use my um, scan and cut. But sometimes I don't like to go through that 
hassle to do just one thing. It seems to take longer than I want it to. Because right now I would be like setting up my scan and cut and then trying to trace around it and making sure it wasn't going to cut off anything I didn't want it to and then blah 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 and then blah 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 but look I'm almost done fussy <laughs> the problem with fussy cutting this is that it does get a little small once you get to the top side All right, I see comments going on. What comments do we have? Um, yeah, so yeah, I am reusing some of the techniques that we used last month. That's what I love about um, the Technique Library membership is that um, we're just talking about techniques. I don't talk about how I apply them in a specific project because I don't want you to be limited by a project. These techniques can be mixed and matched and used in all sorts of ways. So you don't have to, um, it's not just like, oh, I can only do this one thing with it. Not true. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, and I find that if I show you a project, then all of a sudden you feel like that's the only thing you can do with it. Mm -mm. So yeah, we're using some techniques that are popping right back into um, what we did last month but of course it looks totally different because it is a totally different project all right so there you go so see look i left the live in um together so you could cut this out separately or you could leave it just like that um okay so what does a scanning cut look like and how does it work it's um an electronic cutter and it looks kind of like a printer it's the same thing as like a um a silhouette machine or a cricket if you're familiar with those terms um, and those tools it's the same thing except what it does is it actually scans the project in and then it helps you to create the lines to cut so um that's what a scan and cut is it's another newfangled electronic tool it's been on the market for quite a few years at this point but um yeah i tend to use it when i'm bulk creating so if i need a whole lot of something i will use it to cut out a whole lot of whatever it is because then it's worth setting it up and setting it on repeat to cut things over and over and over um yeah it can be expensive it's just like when you decide if you want to do hot foil um, it's not just about getting the add-on for your die cutting machine. So in this case, the Gemini foil press is not prohibitively expensive. Um, but then it's getting the foil and getting the plates and things like that. So I've been really picky about like what I'm getting for plates and things. I want them to be things that I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of because they're not cheap. So a big flower like this, I can cut it into smaller pieces. I can use it as a background. I can use it in a lot of different ways. So I thought this would be a really great one um, to use. Um, sentiments, oil sentiments are gorgeous and you can do a whole bunch at one time and then not have to, and then just kind of keep them in a pile. All right, so this next layer, I'm gonna do a little more intense white um, just to finish it off because right now it's just kind of not getting where I want it so I want a little bit more intense And I guess that's kind of what drew me to um, the toner foil. I already had a laminator. 
And I knew that I could use the laminator that I already had to use and explore toner foil. I didn't need to buy a mink machine. So that was kind of nice too. All right, so that last layer is a little bit more intense on the white and I like it that way. It's gonna dry just a little bit less intense. So, dude, I dropped my, I dropped my paper towel. So I can grab just a little bit of that while it's still wet. There. All right, so let's back up a little bit here so you can see that a little bit better. All right, so this is the end state, and there's that. Mm, I forgot to pull a piece of the bone out. So for popping this up, you see how that's nice and raised, you can use double-sided foam adhesive or you can just use foam sheets. Sometimes I use these because they're fast, they're fairly cheap, and they work just as good. You can die cut this foam as well. So if you want something that fits exactly in shape, you can die cut it, which is super nice too. All right. So, but this just isn't self-adhesive. You can use double-sided adhesive sheets if you like on it, or just liquid glue like I just did there. And I always cut it slightly smaller than the piece that it's going on. So that way you don't have to worry about matching it up exactly. If you're doing the liquid glue piece, um, you just need to let it sit for a second and really adhere itself. Here we go. Looking good. We put a little on the other side and we're going to line it up on our card base. Using the foam like this with the liquid glue is great because it gives you a second to reposition if you need to. So if it doesn't end up completely flat and you need a minute to scooch things around a little bit, you can do that. So that's why I'm always like plus one for liquid adhesive. It gives you a minute. There we go. Gorgeous, right? Okay, so here's the cool thing. Because we're going over this whole busy section, we don't need to be super concerned about where our adhesive lands on the vellum. You're never going to see the adhesive lines because there's so much going on in the background. So I'm really just putting on a little bit of liquid glue all the way across on this. See, super not even neat. <laughs> and then we can get this right in place. Do you see what happened? That's okay. When it glues down, no one's ever gonna know. It just got stuck to my finger. All right, so we just need to be patient. Don't like freak out if something like that happens, like that tea, it just, it ripped right off. I mean, what am I going to do? I have to pull the whole thing off and start over again. If I take just a second to line it up, see, look, you can't even tell. It's gorgeous. All right. And like I said, you can't even see the... Um, adhesive underneath because there's just so much going on under there that you're never going to notice it. All right. So look at how gorgeous that is. It looks like somebody heat embossed right on top of this whole thing, but we didn't. All right. And we're going to just add some sequins. All right. So I think the sequins totally um, makes this. It looks super cute right now. 
but we can make it even cuter. These are the Alta New. Um, these are the, the antique gold. So I find that that really matched the oil from Crafter's Companion really well. If this was more of a yellow gold, I would have used the satin gold sequence because those are a little bit more um, orangey yellow versus a cool yellow. All right, and we're just gonna take, and I love these sequins in particular because there are three sizes. So I can do my small, teeny, medium situation. <clears throat> so I always like to match up the large and the teeny tiny ones together and then take a medium one and put it somewhere away from it in kind of a triangular in a triangular pattern in this case it's like kind of a triangular pattern but it works because these flowers are already in a triangle and then i thought i'd be a little extra i'm actually going to pop a couple of little sequins on the card on the um painted part itself just to kind of bring it all together, but I still have an odd number. So one, two, three, four, five. And these are the teeny, teeny, tiny ones. Let me zoom in again and show you that so you can really see. All right. So I pre-place everything first and then make sure that I like the way it looks. And then I come back with my glue. Or not, are you gonna work? This glue is being difficult. So let's go to glue B, the diamond glaze. This works just as well. As long as it's not being funky too. Which it is. Glue, what are you gonna do? I didn't know I had to ops check my glue before I started this. Ops check, boy. The military in me is coming out today. <laughs> That's fine. I can figure this out. All right. So if it's not going to behave, I'll just pull the glue right off the tip here where it decided it wanted to ooze out. Because worst case scenario, you get like a big glob on your project. Oh my gosh. Nightmare. There we go. It's behaving now. Yeah. I haven't used this bottle in a while, so it might have just been a little vapor locked. There it is, guys. Super, 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 super cute. All right. So, like I shared, if you don't want to invest in foil, this is available as a stamp set as well so you can get it i think it's available as a stamp set boy i hope it's available as a stamp set if not you can um imagine exactly how you could do the same kind of project with a similar set right so you can do heat embossing and come up with the same idea it's just basically a spotlight technique um, that we did some die cutting or that we did some fussy cutting for so super simple might take you a little while because you want to do the whitewash, but if you um, if you can skip the whitewash technique because it really is popping well, then um, you can do that too. Um, and of course, having the backgrounds pulled out of our um, scrap spin really, really helps. So there you go. I uh, hope you guys really enjoy that. And... Um, you come back the rest of this month to explore more foil we'll be talking about a different foil let me think next time next time we're going to be doing toner foil so if you are a toner foiler and you've got toner foil and a mink machine or a um a uh, laminator we'll be talking about that as well so i um i'm glad you guys spent some time with me don't forget to hit the uh, thumbs up on your way out and i hope to see you guys here real soon if you're in the bloom crafters community or thinking about joining the bloom crafters community we do have our live stream at 
5 30 so i will see you guys all over in our private community and um for the rest of you i will see you next thursday i hope you have a wonderful weekend and that you have some time to craft until i see you happy crafting <laughs>